Well, we start with the heat wave that continues to batter India. Extreme temperatures across the north and the east of the country have caused hundreds of deaths. In the south, the searing hot spell has led to severe water shortages. The situation has reached a crisis point in Chennai. This is India's sixth biggest city. Chennai's four main water reservoirs have dried up. Take a look at the satellite image from one year ago. You can see the water levels there. And uh, this is what it looks like now. Residents are desperate for rain, but monsoon season in Tamil Nadu isn't supposed to come until late in the fall. Locals are now blaming authorities for failing to recognize the shortage and deal with it early on. Barren and almost bone dry, this reservoir is down to its last 1% of water. A shepherd has led his animals to the last few drops. This is what Red Hills Lake should look like. But now an acute drought has crippled Chennai's water supply. After months of high temperatures and extreme water scarcity, experts say the situation is grave. For the last two years, there's a deficit in the rainfall. That is one thing. The second thing is, uh, Chennai always goes through the cycle of uh, five to ten years. We have the cycle where the rainfall actually fails the city. The city turned off the Hassan family's water more than 40 days ago. Since then, they've had to buy drinking water. They still get enough from the tap, thanks to their underground tanks. Actually, maybe we'll keep it here. The cisterns collect and treat rainwater during the monsoon season. This way, they can survive dry spells. But now, their reserves are running out. We pay water tax okay, every month okay, as part of our taxes. And like I told you last month, what happened to my tax that I paid? Okay, I did not get even a drop of water. So that is one where the government has uh, not uh, stood up to its responsibilities. After Chennai shut off its water supply, the city turned to sending tanker trucks into desperate villages. To fill them, it tapped groundwater wells. Tanker drivers also deliver waters from other regions throughout the country. People are suffering a lot from the scarcity and heavy demand for water. We've had more than 500 bookings to deliver water. Only the poorer neighbourhoods are provided with free water, though not every day. Deliveries often come with drama. The mood among the locals is tense. It's not long before the situation escalates. We get water through that pump, but it is sewage water and has a foul smell. They will tell us to use that water for daily needs. At the other end of the same street, people get water delivered by water tanks every day, but we don't get it. Residents here have had to pay water tax for the past two years. Now they're demanding clean water supplies to fill up their own reserve tanks. In recent times, Chennai has become one of India's key industrial engines. During the building boom, the city paved over natural water sources. The state Supreme Court has told Chennai to stop this, but little has been done. Several rivers flow through Chennai. One is being widened to create another lane for river traffic. The water quality is miserable. This river, like many here, more like open sewers. So this government is talking about re reusing the sewage, treating it to an to a acceptable standard which can be used by the industry. So that there they are trying to eliminate industry as a major user of pure, fresh groundwater. Outside Chennai, the result of industry's appetite for fresh water is laid bare. The water table has fallen dramatically. On top of that, the farmers grow rice and sugar cane. Both devour water. The women say their husbands are forced to seek work in the cities to support their families. 
If it had rained, it would have been better for the crops and for us, but there's no water even to drink. The situation's disastrous. Back at the Red Hills Lake Reservoir, drought conditions make renovations easier. The first upgrade since it was built in 1910 by British engineers. The region has long struggled with periods of drought. The state government plans to invest 33 million euros in the water supply. But Chennai is holding out for the monsoon, though only mild rains are forecast, not nearly enough to quench the thirst. And we can get the latest on the story. DW's Birish Banerjee is standing by in Delhi, monitoring the situation in Chennai for us. Hi, Birish. Good to see you. We heard the accusation in our report from locals that authorities did not do enough to get ahead of the situation. Is that a fair accusation? Hi, Sumi. To a great extent, yes, I would say. And that's what a number of experts are saying as well. Now, you must bear in mind that Chennai, which is the capital of the state of Tamil Nadu, along with Tamil Nadu, gets rains from what's called the northeast monsoons. Now, these happen between the months of October and December. Now, as far back as January, it became clear that these monsoons were a failure in many ways, which is to say that the state of Tamil Nadu, and hence Chennai by extension, did not get the amount of rainfall that was expected. This rainfall is important to uh, fill the reservoirs that feed Chennai. And you saw a glimpse of those reservoirs, which are completely dried up in that report that you just aired. Now, the state government knew about this in January. They instituted a bit of water rationing, but that's about it. So you basically had a situation in which Chennai was heading to an acute water shortage in the summer months and a state government that really wasn't prepared. But beyond this, Sumi, what is really important to look at is beyond the current administration and the current government, it has literally been a failure of successive governments and successive administrations in Chennai to stop the massive spread of urbanization. Chennai is a fairly a green city. It has three rivers, it has four reservoirs, it has five wetlands, six forests. Most of these are lying polluted and not usable. A lot of them have dried up. It's literally been pure, poor water management to blame over successive years. A lot of this urbanization as well that I mentioned has been happening on the banks of the rivers. It has been happening on lake beds. So a lot of these water resources have been depleted without any alternate to replace them. So the situation is bad, Biresh, you're saying, and it looks like it's only going to get worse. What can be done at this point other than waiting for rain? Well, at the moment, Chennai is doing what it can do best, which is look at short-term solutions in which they're trying to buff up the resources that are available to the city. And by that, I mean looking at the three major desalinization plants that provide water to the city. They are working at nearly maximum capacity to achieve maximum efficiency. Other than that, the number of tankers that are being made available in the city has gone up. There are proposals, there are talks to bring in piped water from more than 200 kilometers away. And there is also a talk of sending in uh, uh, water through, uh, uh, through railway wagons into the city. That's the short-term nature of it. But of course, that throws open the longer-term question as to what is Chennai's long-term strategy to manage these situations in the future. And that is where experts are cautioning that things like rainwater harvesting need to be implemented in full so that the city has water reservoirs to tide over these kinds of periods. And there is also an appeal being made to the city these residents to perhaps change their water consumption habits because clearly Chennai doesn't have so much water that it can literally waste or call upon when needed. DW's Birish Banerjee reporting in Delhi for us. Thank you very much.